Okay, so I had temporary computer difficulties. This is part two of the Mozilla Hub Spoke tutorial. So as I was saying, if I would like to find out more about this asset that I have gotten from Sketchfab, which is a store of 3D assets, I can always find information in the properties panel, the model URL that I can go to, and I already have that pulled up here. Uh, you might notice I've um, kind of reorientated uh, the video a little bit so to make sure that you're able to view everything as I am showing it on the screen. So if you see that the format is slightly different from the earlier tutorial. Anyway, here is our little bot bunny where you can tell that it is a uh, free downloadable model and so different uh, 3D artists upload their models here and some of them allow them to be downloaded. It includes information about the vertices and triangles so the makeup of that model and it does have a Creative Commons attribution which you can learn about here and in that attribution you are free to share, copy and redistribute the material, adapt um, remix, transform, and build upon the material. So always check um, the Creative Commons license. You are asked to give additional appropriate credit and if it is in your hubs um, project it will actually share the, uh, the attribution of the artist model, model excuse me, uh, when you publish this project. Um, so that does get included. Now, other possibilities we won't go into right now, but you could also download this 3D model and take it into uh, Blender or into Maya. Um, you can have it, this is actually in the Blender format, or here it's a GLTF, which is that web format that I was talking about before, web 3D format or the augmented reality format. I don't work with that one. And so you could download it and then bring it into Blender, uh, change aspects of the model, change the texture maps, meaning you know the, the kind of skin, how the, the, the art that overlays the model, etc. Um, for right now, we won't do that. But as you can see, um, we do get the caution sign that it is a rather large file. Uh, maybe for the purposes of this tutorial, let's just try one that might not be as problematic. Oh, but he's huge. Okay, so that's why it's a good idea. I'm just going to get rid of this chocolate Easter bunny. And I will say, um, you really have to just kind of test and, and you know test on different browsers, test with your friends um, as you're building this. I think at this point we'll actually go ahead, let me turn lit and shadows back on so we can see the shadows. I'm going to turn off the toggle, the grid. Maybe I'm going to do one other thing. The sky box um, for right now I'm going to cha change the time of day. Um, maybe let's make this um, 12, okay, hour, and then we can change the latitude, the luminance, um, the scattering amount of light and dark, and the distance that that is scattered, where we want the horizon to start or end, some fun things here. I'm not actually changing it so much as we go. Um, so that is our skybox. Um, you can decide to turn that on and off course as well. Uh, for right now I think that gives a nice kind of landscape effect and you can actually um, use sky boxes. I use kind of sky boxes, sky domes, um, sometimes that I have created myself. Um, so we'll keep it visible. Any assets that you do not want to appear you can always, for example, this floor plane, if I didn't want that to appear, I'd just turn off the visibility. But please note that it still counts in the size of your file and also in your floor plan. So if we, for right now, let's just regenerate our floor plan and see what we get. So you can see now, because we've made this wall walkable, that our floor plan does include the possibility of getting you know, close to that wall and for right now it's also including our object um, I'm going to turn these off and I'm going to move them off to the side for a second okay and now I'm going to go back to floor plan regenerate all right um, and let's see sale size this too takes some um, auto cell size. 
voice try mesh. So you can see you can get some different effects. Let's actually see what we get. Uh oh. All right. So we have something that's walkable, and then I'll just move this little guy back in. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, they also have some rocks. Maybe we'll just put some rocks in our scene. We're just populating our scene with you know different things. Again, that's a pretty large rock for indoors. So let it scale that down. Mm -hmm. So I'm just using my mouse uh, left mouse button and scrolling down. I can then go to these numbers over here. Sometimes that becomes easier. Point two. Okay, so we've got a bunny, a rock, um, a wall, and a floor plane. Um, and maybe some, from some of my assets, what would I also like to include in here? Uh, let's just put this as an office chair that I made for IEM, so we'll just put an office chair in here. Not a very exciting scene right now, but uh, just to get us started. Oh, and let's change the color of our light a little bit. Um, well, since we've got this kind of warm light, yeah, let's make some warmer light. We'll change the intensity, maybe we don't want it. We want it to be kind of like dusk or something. Um, this is just giving us um, shadow map resolution and bias and radius um, stats. Uh, that we will talk about more later. Okay, so for right now we've got this and so let's just publish to hubs. So I'm going to first I'd like to just get in the habit because a while ago my computer froze. Um, get in the habit of saving your project. So control S just like in any of the applications you work in. Um, there also is help for keyboard and mouse control control commands, discord, some of the other things I um, discussed earlier when I was introducing spoke to you. Developer, this is where you have um, experimental features. So if you click on this, notice we could actually walk through the scene here with the WASD keys. Um, what sometimes happens when you're in developer mode is then when you uh, turn this off, it still kind of stays there. So I don't um, use it. So you have to press escape to get your um, mouse and your cursor back. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn that off for right now. And then as I was about to do before, I've done command S or file save, all right? Uh, command or control, depending on what um, machine you're working on. And now I'm just going to publish to hubs. And this, I've already given it this name. Carliganus, NYU, IDM, VRFall, that's my attribution. Um, and then you see here model attribution is there for the model that I use, that I was using uh, from Sketchfab. And so um, I'm not going to promote this scene since this is just a test scene right now. But if I wanted to, I could allow remixing of this scene so other people could load this scene and remix it in fun ways. And um, Mozilla could promote my scene. So I'm just going to save and publish for right now. And as you can see, um, the polygon count is medium. So that's it's still going to function effectively. The materials are very low because we only have a few materials being used. The textures too um, are using, uh, and this is really great, it gives us all these stats. Um, so 245 megabytes of video RAM. And the file size is 30 megabytes. You notice that Mozilla Hubs usually recommends a file size of no more than 16 although I have had file sizes up to 50 megabytes. Um, and then it also gives you the light. So we're just going to publish this scene. And that takes a minute for it to publish. Okay, uh, for some reason right now it's giving me a, break, um, a broken link to the thumbnail. 
That sometimes happens, but it should show up when we go into hubs. So we're going to say, OK, if I already had this as a save scene um, in hubs, I'd just be able to go to hubs and load that scene with the updates. But I'm just going to go view scene, and I'm going to create a room with this scene because it doesn't already exist. So I'm creating a room. And it's loading the objects, as you see, similar to what we did in class. Um, Nobody is here yet for right now. I'm not using my VR headset, so I'm just going to enter the room. Um, I'm going to browse avatars. I have an avatar um, that I use quite often, my Carla Gann. And I'm going to go ahead and rename it to Carla Gann. She's a pretty consistent ah, avatar for me and press accept. Um, you'll notice I don't see myself in here for right now. Uh, and then I'm just going to enter on screen, enter now. Um, because uh, I didn't set up um, the preview camera, so it just kind of came in anywhere. But as you can see, we have our little bunny rabbit and um, our chair and our rock. Um, now, a couple things when you're in here, because I had some questions about navigating through this scene. Since I authored this scene, um, I have uh, some preferences here. I'm not going to leave it conventional Swift room, because I created a new room that was based on something I was building in Spoke, right? But then I generate a new room in Hubs, so I want to call it Hubs tutorial, something really boring and generic right now, tutorial. Yeah, I'm spelling that right. Um, we are fall 20. Okay, fine. Notice the room size access is um, 24. You can up the room size access I'm seeing now. Hmm, I might want to test that more. But right now we're going to keep it to 24. We'll have a shared link. Um, member permissions. Everyone can create and move objects, create cameras, pin objects, create drawings, create emoji, and allow flying. So I'll allow all those um, permissions. I have the chat functionality at the bottom here and then functionality to create objects. That functionality also exists at the top. Um, and then this is just my scene. So hello. I'm here. I just press the return there. I'm going to favorite this room so that I can return to this later when I'm in hubs. So what happens there? If you go to favorite rooms, and I'm able to do this because I have a hubs account, so make sure you create a hubs account. And here are a list of all my favorite rooms. Some of these I probably will get rid of because some of these are early um, iterations of final projects. Um, and then I have gone over set name and avatar, favorite rooms. Let's go to preferences. This is where I can disable sound effects. I didn't include any sound effects for right now. Um, mute microphone. Um, uh, adjust my controls to disable movement, backwards movement, um, teleporting, etc. For right now, I'm going to keep everything just at the default. Um, browser default for me is in English. You can change that. Um, preferred camera, um, for right now, I'm just going to, as I said, I'm just going to keep everything at the, defa the, the default, but um, these are all different preferences that you can adjust and play with. Um, so, once I'm in there, as you can see, this tells me that there's one person currently um, in the space. And right now, because I have, my media has all been media that I created or produced and put together in Spoke, it's not counting any of these objects as media objects. So let's add some objects. So notice this takes me to Google Poly, or we can go to Sketchfab. I'm going to stay in Google Poly just because um, the polygon count tends to stay a little bit lower. And what would we like to put in here? Um, let's, I was going to say an airplane, but let's put a cat with our rabbit, OK? And there he is. So I can click on this cat, left click, and then if I hold down my shift um, bar, notice I, it gives me these options to say send all sorts of little emoji, but it also gives me an object option, excuse me, an option to edit 
uh, the scale or the position of this cat, its location, if I want to pin it somewhere, if I want to clone it, if I want to trash it, if I want to open the link to find more information about it or refresh it. Um, for right now, I'm just going to move and scale it up. Go back here, rotate it. It's bigger than the chair. This is a super big cat. I'm going to pin it so it'll stay there. Maybe I'll clone it, and now you'll see I have a second cat, and I'll move that. Cats, cats everywhere. Um, and a little robot bunny. Now notice when I look around, I didn't really have that <laughs> on the ground. Let's try to put that cat on the ground. And maybe this cat, too. Now he's currently or that cat is currently pinned, so let's unpin that cat. Again, all of this is being done by hitting the space bar. And let's see if we can kind of ground him to move forward, rotate. So again, the keys for doing all of this are on your keyboard, W, moving forward or backward in space. W and S, W going forward, S going backwards, D going right, S, uh, excuse me, A going left, uh, shift W to go super fast, but I ran into a wall, so that didn't really help, G to fly, so now I'm kind of flying up in the sky, what fun, and you can text, see that it has fly mode enabled, and if I press shift S, I will increase my speed. I'm going far, far away. Shift F to get back. And I'm pressing G again, now fly mode is disabled, so I'm more on the ground here. Okay. Um, also, to control the pivoting around, I'm just holding down my um, mouse, left mouse button and rotating my mouse on uh, my desk um, to be able to pivot freely. Uh, notice it's now counted the two objects I've added to the space. I'd like to take a photograph now. So here's my avatar there. Um, maybe I'd like to actually have some of the environment, some of my new friends. So uh, let's try to turn that camera around. So again, I'm just pressing the space bar to turn it around. Um, okay, and I'm just going to use the camera mode. Let me get a little closer. There I am, and I'm talking. Use camera mode. All right, I took a photo and I can tweet it out if I have um, Twitter uh, set up. Uh, and here's my photo. I can just save it to my desktop or share it somewhere. If I don't like that, you know, if my environment seems to be getting cluttered, I can just hold down the space bar again and trash that. And I can trash the camera or maybe I'll decide um, to take a video this time. Hi. Uh, because I don't have a headset right now, you notice I don't have any hands, but if I had my headset in, I could actually wave, but now I just get to kind of talk a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And there is my video. And it's like a six second video. Yay. And there we go. Okay. Uh, again, I will trash that. And... I will turn off the camera for right now. I could also share my screen if I wanted to. Uh, we'll get really kind of meta right now. So this is the software I'm using to record <laughs> this um, lesson. So here we see my OBS space, yes. Um, I'm, and so I'm streaming and then I can always just stop here. Uh, these are just showing me my mic controls. This again is how I can create an object. Um, and this is where I can get the camera. Oh, I can also, the, so that's sharing my screen, but I can also share my video cam. Oh my gosh, here I am. And there's my partner eating lunch in the background. All right, I will trash that for right now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay, uh, then some other fun tools are being able to draw. So, um, dee dee, dee dee. 
my drawing is, let me close this out. I'm going to turn that off for a second. I'm just drawing all sorts of funny things. Um, so control Z to undo, escape or right click to drop pen, okay, or some tools. Carla is here. Okay, and then I can go undo and all of that and press escape and just drop that pen and you notice it's no longer highlighted. Um, so that should give you um, a kind of quick tour of work of playing in Mozilla Hubs and, and some of the things that you can do. Right here you see there's a great little tour that you can take which is probably um, a even more comprehensive in terms of introdu introducing you to documentation and the different ways that you can explore. So you can click on start tour as well if you want. And so you see click and drag around. Um, use the WASD keys to move. Hold shift as I mentioned before to boost. Yes. Yes. Use the Q and E keys to rotate. So as you can see that gives you a 40 um, Five degree. Click and drag an object to move it. We have some objects in here that we can move. Press and hold spacebar to show object menus as you see. There we go. And we could always um, click on open link to see that actual object in Google Poly. Um, share at the top screen if you want to share this room with anyone else and it gives you a hubs link. No one else is here. I'm all alone right now. Okay. Um, let me see if there is anything else to this tutorial that they wanted to. Yeah, I think that's it. So, as you can see, this is live and it's um, working at 60 frames per second. So, that is a pretty good broadcast. Now, I'm going to go back to Hubs now. Um, I mean, to Spoke, excuse me. And. Actually, I'm going to refresh this because I had used that developer mode. Let's see if this uh, is a little less wonky. Okay, um, I'm back in here. I'm going to turn off snapping, some things like this. A couple of other things we can add actually in the spoke environment. So um, it gives elements where uh, a couple of cool things you can do. Say, um, I wanted to duplicate these bunnies. I can now click on both of them and group them. So they're now in a group. And so if I click on the group, then I can um, change the scale of both of them. Oh, wait. I created a group and I didn't put the bunnies in the group. Oops. Um, come on. Yeah, Command G. I, I, was, I was trying to go by the actual interface down here, but Command G, like in many applications, is how you're going to group them and then you know, rename that. It's a good way to keep everything organized as well. Okay, and now maybe I want to scale that up. They just went, where did they go? Oh, yeah. Uh, by selection, I want to scale. I should have scaled up so they didn't go off of the or outside of this room I'm working in. But as you can see, I can now act on them as a group. I'm just um, hitting the rotation key here um, and it's rotating 90 degrees. Um, or I can rotate like so and everything is acted on together. All right, so that should be something familiar to most of you working in um, various digital applications. Uh, I can add a ground plane um, that covers, you know, the entire area. I want my ground plane to actually be zero, zero, zero. All right. Um, I can add box colliders. So box colliders will get into more working in Unity as well. But um, it's so that objects will bounce off or rest on top of. Without colliders, objects will fall through floors and go through walls, right? Uh, right now, let's click on this one. It's collidable and walkable. So it basically has already been set to um, be collidable and walkable, but we could still create this box collider on it um, and set kind of the parameters. 
of its collision. Um, I'm making it smaller so or larger so people could actually like there'd be this invincible box and they could sit on top of the rock and not touch it. It doesn't really make sense from any kind of physics perspective, but just uh, showing you that example. You can always also just delete by right clicking um, or control clicking on any object in your hierarchy. Uh, you can add more lights. Maybe we'll try a spotlight. Um, T. Sorry, that spotlight just did something crazy. Where did it go? Yeah, it's super big. Um, F. I chose the spotlight and I've lost. So now, so this is great. I've lost everything, right? But never fear. I just press F and it gets back. And then I'm going to click on my spotlight that I totally lost. It somehow got put way out here. Who knows what I was thinking? Um, again, this is an unscripted tutorial. <laughs> uh, didn't practice before, just so you can kind of just see how I play around in these things. And so now, Here's my spotlight. I'm going to change the, I'm going to make the intensity 60. And bring it up. So right now it's just spotting. And then I'm just going to spotlight that chair. Um, inner cone angle 2. And outer cone angle, let's make that smaller, 25. So it actually is hitting the wall as well. Uh, I do want it to cast shadows. Let's turn our shadows back on. And we can set up shadow bias and radius, which we'll talk about more later. Um, but there we go. So we've got kind of a spotlight on that chair now. Um, what else would I like to add to this scene? Um, so, oh, spawn points. So like if there are a point where people appear when they enter your scene. Right now we have one spawn point. Maybe I want to set a second spawn point. I try to keep it um, the Y at zero. I've had some issues when I set link several scenes together um, where the spawn points actually cause people to come in to the scene, enter the scene in kind of strange um, positions, like underneath the scene and some things like that. Um, so there are all these other lights that you can use. Um, a waypoint, a point people can teleport to. Oh, we didn't even talk about teleporting, so when we go back into hubs, uh, I will review that as well. Okay, so here is a place where someone could teleport to as a waypoint. I mean, T for translate. Oh yeah, I was clicking on the arrow on top of his head instead of on him. Okay, so that's a place where people can teleport to. Um, video. Um, so let's put a video object in there. Right now you see there is no video, but I have some assets of my own. So let's see. Lots of assets. Um, what do I want to use? I've got a whale that we look at from the bottom. Oh, let's put in the bison. Okay. Um, oh, so I just put in this bison video object, but like since I already dragged the video object to um, the stage, uh, what I could do, so I could just um, control copy and go to that video object, control paste. And so now I drag the video object first, and then I drag the video itself just by itself, so it it's fine either way. Um, I'm just going to delete this one, so I just press backspace on my keyboard to delete it, and so I have this video object. Uh, and now, what am I going to do? I'm going to rename it Bison, which was its original name. Uh, so I have all these scaling properties, etc. I want the projection to be flat, but you could make it 3D, 360, um, an equal rectangular. Uh, I don't want any controls. Now one thing you're going to find is it still puts audio controls, which really disturbs me. There's no video in this. 
I mean, no audio in this video, but you will still get audio controls, or at least a, a week ago when I was uh, publishing and working in hubs. Okay, so there's a great big video, and let's um, rotate him. Oh, sorry, I, I use, I sometimes get confused. Um, I'm going to rotate him, so we just want it to be negative 90. Uh, with my hotkeys in Maya and my hotkeys in Hubs, which are slightly different, okay? Um, because R is rotate, and um, I use E for rotation, and you see E just does the 90 degree rotation, um, so R. All right, so that will play, actually. Uh, panner mode means that the audio type is set, and you'll see this. We'll, we'll actually put in an audio clip in a second. Um, because this doesn't have an audio clip, but uh, panner mode means that it would be kind of surround sound and also it's based on your proximity to the audio object. And you'll see when you're talking to people in really large hub spaces, the further you are away, it actually is relative to the sound that you hear is relative to your distance from the other person talking, which is really phenomenal. For right now, I'm just going to set zero uh, to stereo volume zero, but I will still get controls. But um, you'll see what I mean by that in a second, and just, you know, the visibility is on, all of that. Um, for audio, I have an audio um, object here, so I'm just going to put that in. So you see I get this little icon that will actually show up in my scene as controller. I'm going to set it for panner mode. Um, I'm not going to go into some of my audio people in class who, if, if you decide to have fun and build something in Mozilla Hubs, um, you can um, adjust the distance model, the roll-off factor, the reference distance. Um, I haven't done a lot of experimentation with this, but I'd love anyone who is interested and also already has a grounding in working with audio and sound objects to, you know, um, maybe explore this further. Hmm. For right now, we've just added a few objects, so that's great. Command S or Control S to save their project. And now um, we could just test it in Hubs, but I'm just going to, I like to publish it, to go ahead and publish it. Um, so I'm going to save and publish. Awesome. And we just watched that progress bar. Story of my life, watching progress bars. Check your Instagram or your email while you're waiting. Instead of liking, just staring at this bar. <laughs> Yay! Okay, and I, instead of saying view my scene, I'm going to say okay, because remember, I had saved this before, so I want to reload this. So I'm just going to go to my favorite rooms, and Hub's tutorial was my favorite room, and see that the thumbnail is already updated. So I'll click on that, and I'm going to leave the earlier iteration of it and join the room with the updates. Taking a second to just load the objects. Great. And as you can see, as we enter the room, we now have audio, uh, we have a video going, um, we have a spotlight, this pink spotlight on our chair, the um, replication of our creatures. Oh, one other thing. Um, I'll just put, what other thing do I want to put in here? Just non sequitur. Um, Oh, look at that cool classroom. Okay, but uh, I digress. Focus. I'll just put in a tree, an elm tree. Okay, and I'm going to now um, pin that elm tree. Okay, so what happens when you pin models is they actually will stay in your scene. So even though you've published from hubs with these specific 
models in mind and people can you know put models in every time you reload the scene all those models that have been added get it erased um, unless you pin the model so if we're about to go into this scene again I'm just going to do it this way favorite rooms And so now notice that because I pinned it kind of far out, but because I pinned it in this strange place floating here, um, that stays in the scene. Now you'll go back to spoke and let's say, let's just back to projects and I want to reload. I'd already saved that project and I'll reload it. You'll notice that tree does not show up in your authoring environment it was added by a user or by yourself whoever had the authority to do that in hubs and so if you want to get rid of anything somebody has left in hubs um, just click unpin and then you can trash it and get rid of it okay if there were other users here you can also do something um, which is called promote, you click on the user. I'm, it's just myself right now. I should come in with my other account. But you could click on the user and um, hit this, their name, and then it allows you to promote them. And in promoting them, they have access to um, anything that you might have turned off to uh, regular users to your space. So again, in room settings, um, I could turn off all these objects so that people weren't allowed. Now because I am the author of this environment it works but let me go on Firefox and just show you that. Um, I'm going to sign out for a second and I'm just going to Box. Okay, I've got the URL. So I'm not signed in as myself. Let's wait for it to load. So, so in a room, mute myself. Mute myself. I think it's already, it's, already, it's still it's doubling, doubling my, my voice. voice. Oh well, oh, bear well, with bear me with for a second. second. And just and see, just see I, don't I don't have, have any, of, any these of these options. options. Because, because they've been they've disabled. Been disabled. Um, but if, but I, go if I go here, here I, can't I can't promote because I'm not logged into my other account. account. But, but if, if I, I were logged, logged in, in, I could be I promoted. Could be promoted. But, but I can, I can also, also be hidden, hidden muted, muted, or kicked, or kicked out, out if I'm causing trouble. trouble. All, right. All right, let's, let's get, get rid of this double mic sound. OK, cool. So I think that's it for now, and stay tuned for more tutorials to follow. Thank you.